YouTube, what is going on guys? And today I'm going to talk about Payback. And I'm not, don't worry, I'm going back after this to the original, like, um, backdrop of you guys seeing, like, the statues and such. But just for this, because I want to look at the card itself, um, so that way I can really sit here and talk to you guys. And that way I can kind of remember what the card was, because it was, uh, like a couple hours ago, so no. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this, all right? Kickoff show, Enzo Amore versus Big Cass versus The Club. Enzo and Cass defeated The Club. I said, so 1-0 and in predictions. I, I I didn't watch the match, so I can't judge it. Um, all right. Uh, United States Championship match. Um, So, Chris Jericho defeated Kevin Owens to become the new U.S. champion. And I, I don't get this. I get the idea, of course, of... The guy that was always betrayed, that I get. Like, I wasn't surprised, but I thought he would win at Mania to do that. And then Kevin Owens would get the thing. But my question is now... All right, let's actually go ahead and talk about the match. Match was great. It was a great match. It was up to par, I guess. I don't think it was as good as the Mania match. It was up to par, actually. It was up to par, really, with the Mania match. It was good, just as good as the Mania match. Not, but, yeah, I, I don't like how, number one, this match opened the show both times because this is so much more than an opening match. This is your best build-up match out of, again, every match on this card. You, this is your best built-up match, and, again, so... Basically, you know, it's this typical back and forth action until uh, the walls of Jericho was applied and Kevin Owens put the finger on the bottom rope again. And then Chris Jericho kind of like snapped and just started beating the shit out of his finger and then like put it in the staircase and then uh, hit it. Um, so, yeah. And then ended up Chris Jericho, put him in the walls of Jericho. He was going to try to put out the finger again, and he couldn't do it. He could just do this, and then pulled his arm back in, and then tapped. Um, yeah. But, so, to my knowledge now, Kevin Owens goes back to Raw, and Chris Jericho is the, going to SmackDown. That's the way I interpreted. That's the way I interpreted the match rules. That Kevin Owens was never traded the U.S. and the Intercontinental Champion were switched so now Chris Jericho is the champion but then Kevin Owens gets his rematch clause I don't know how they're gonna work any of this out I don't know if it's because I know they're supposed to go on tour Chris Jericho is supposed to go on a uh, tour with Fozzie I don't know if they're gonna do like a backstage work where Jericho um is just gonna be away for a little bit I don't know what their plan is because they've advertised Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. And I don't know if they're just going to say, oh, well, Kevin Owens is still here and he's going to get his rematch. And then, then it's, I don't know. I don't know if Kevin Owens is still on SmackDown. I'm pretty sure he isn't, but they never explained that. They would. It just would have been a lot better if they explained. Because if Chris, the whole reason was if Chris Jericho won, he'd be moved to SmackDown Live. Not if Kevin Owens lost, he'd come back to Raw. So, I'm pretty sure Kevin Owens goes back to Raw. That was my interpretation of what the match was. Um, Austin Aries defeats Neville via DQ. Good match. Not as good as the Romania match, though, in my opinion. Um... And this time, Neville pulled the referee to break a submission hold and then got the cued to this match. So we get a continuation of this feud, probably with TJ Perkins as the sidekick, blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, Raw Tag Team Championship match. Um, the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro. Fine match. Jeff Hardy actually got his teeth knocked out. One of his tooth. One of his teeth. He got a tooth knocked out. There we go. That's the correct way to say it. He got a tooth knocked out um, from like a kick in it. Yeah, so I don't know. How, he might be out of action for maybe like a couple weeks because of that. I don't know. I'm not a dental surgeon, but they probably will not want him to compete for the next couple weeks. So I wouldn't be surprised if they off TV tomorrow to sell it. 
to sell the attack, but the tooth is probably going to be and then probably like maybe two weeks or something. But after the match, um, then they did a, um, a, so then Seamus and Cesaro turned heel, beat the shit out of them. Okay, good. I don't know. I still don't think this team needs to be together for, really for that much longer, in my opinion. But they're probably going to continue this feud out a little bit. So, all right. Raw Women's Championship match. Um, this ending was retarded. And now Alexa Bliss is... So, actually, let me go back here. Um, so, I was... I'm 3-1 in predictions right now. 3-1. Um, I still, yes, Austin Aries wins. I never, it doesn't matter. He still won. So I'm counting myself as a 3-1. Now, this is where I go to 3-2. In the Raw Women's Championship match, Alexa Bliss defeated uh, Bayley to become champ. And she is now the first ever Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion, which I don't agree with whatsoever. Um, this was retarded by booking standards. But I, I think I, I was thinking about this more, and I'm pretty sure I know where they're going with it now. Because I'm pretty sure Sasha's going to take the belt off Alexa. And then at SummerSlam, they have the Sasha versus Bayley match with Sasha officially having to cheat to win. They might have, like, a match before it, and then she, she cheat. And she's like, I didn't do it intentionally. And then, like, at SummerSlam, she fully knew she cheated. Something like that. But if this again turns into a scenario of... Now, keep in mind, the betting odds were for Bailey to win until this morning. I just want to put this out there. So Vince probably woke up and changed his fucking mind. The betting odds, yes. The original betting odds. Now, I don't look at betting odds because I think that's fucking dumb. You're betting on a fixed product. You are betting against Vince McMahon. You are betting on the idea that you can think like Vince McMahon. It's fucking retarded. Betting odds are fucking dumb in wrestling. So, yes. She, and the way the match ended was dumb. She got kicked into the ring post. Like, it, 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 it wasn't... The idea was there. Just how it was done was fucking dreadful. She, like only hit like she got pushed off a pin and it was just kind of like eh, like she got hit like right here and then kind of like just fell and it was more of a shoulder getting hit than anything it was just uh, i can't i'm not trying to be bitchy with people but alexa bliss she's great on the character aspect i do think her ring work is good and I think she's more of a total package than a lot of the female superstars on Raw. If you let heel Sasha be, be if you let Sasha be heel, then she's the most complete package. Um, then maybe Alexa, but I don't know if you. But Charlotte as a face is gonna take her down a lot in my notch. I don't know yet. Maybe she got maybe she got the help she needed for acting because she was fucking dreadful as it. That's why they had Ric Flair to be her manager. But um yeah. Now let's get into the real shit. The House of Horrors match. I wouldn't do the full thing. The fucking house part was dumb. Just in one word, dumb. It was literally Bray Wyatt running like a schoolgirl. And this shit wasn't terrifying. It was like something a fucking like sixth grader would make. And like I said, this would be something you saw in like a sixth grade haunted house bad. It's fucking terrible. Terrible. This was like them trying to do Final Deletion and them fucking with it so hard. You know how like people are like, the Final Deletion's gonna fucking suck. 
It's gonna fucking just suck. This is the dumbest idea I think I've ever heard in wrestling. And then when you watched it, you're like, oh my god, this is hilarious and fun. This wasn't funny. It wasn't anything. It was trying to be serious, and it wasn't in any way, shape, or form. The House of Horrors match is not as good as Final Deletion, in my opinion. Nowhere near any of the delete of the Broken Hardy shit. I think it was better than their fucking, um, the Wyatt compound thing with the New Day. Mostly for the fact that I saw shit this time. When I, when the Wyatt compound shit, I literally saw nothing. It was just like, just literally like blackness. And you saw like the, the idea of someone punching somebody. And that's what we, you really saw. That's what I saw at least. But, um, so then yeah. The idea of this match was done too. It was literally, again, you have to beat the person up. Then you leave the house to go back to the arena. And then it is, you can win by pinfall, submission, or forfeit. Considering if you beat him up so bad... If you beat your opponent so bad in the House of Horror that he couldn't make it back to the arena, you win by forfeit. Which is just the most... I want you to think about that for a second. And also, before the sins, he gets on his knees, you know, and, and then he just turns the lights, the lights of the house red. Oh my God! He turned the house lights red! My God, Randy Orton! It's just, oh my God, you got to get his wife on the phone. He's done. Get his wife on the phone. Oh my God, we might have a... This is that. That's like as bad as a broken neck. When Bray Wyatt turns the lights fucking red, you know you've gone... To, he's, he's a fucking menace to society. Lock this man up. He turned the lights in the house red. The fucking lights in the house were red. Just like as red as this fucking shirt. It was a done deal. Put a fork in him. This House of Horrors was the dumbest thing ever. And it gets even dumber. So they get back to the arena. And Randy Orton, when uh, Bray arrives, he walks to the arena. He's hurt from what I really don't know. <laughs> like, he barely took anything in the match. Like, Randy Orton, he, he kicked him and I think beat him with a pot a little bit. <laughs> there was one part in the match right before Randy Orton got his, like, the fridge thrown on him that, um, it looked, it looked like he was about to drown him, but he had a pot in his hand. Bray Wyatt, it was literally looking like Orton was going to spank Bray with a fucking pot. I'm not joking on you. This was how childish this shit was. It was fucking dreadful. Just fucking, it was just unfun. So, yeah, it was, ugh. And then, so that's why I'm actually going to end this portion. I will upload the next portion in, right after this. You can just go watch it. But I'm going to actually upload part two because my phone, no matter what, I have to upload a part two. Because due to the phone restrictions on this, I can only upload 15 minute videos at a time. So if you like this video and want to see my thoughts on the Seth Rollins vs. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman vs. Roman Reigns, and the rest of my rant on this fucking house of horror shit, watch it. If you don't, that's okay too. Hopefully you enjoyed this part. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on part two now.